So number 22 on your list of Chris Sims top 40 quarterbacks currently playing or soon to play in the NFL is Sam Darnold, Sam Darnold, New York Jets. Yeah, I mean, come on. I'm pumped about Sam Darnold, everything about him. You know, hey, I'll, I'll be to be totally transparent. In the 2018 draft, I had him as the fifth quarterback out of the five that were drafted in the first round. I was wrong. I'll say that right now. He's definitely better than Lamar Jackson for sure, 100%. You know, at this point, he's certainly better than Josh Rosen. Hard to evaluate Rosen. So, I know I was wrong. But I also clarified at the time that, you know, I always thought Sam Darnold was a top 20 pick and certainly worthy of, you know, being in that top quarterback conversation. But, damn, Sam Darnold showed me a lot last year. Yeah. I think the thing that jumps out to me, uh, Ahmed, he's got phenomenal feet. Right, he can really dance around the pocket, borderline scrambler, dancer in the pocket. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you want to say there, but totally comfortable in that environment when it does become backyard football. That's where he became famous at USC with some of those games where he's scrambling around, making plays. Right. But he's got a great feel within the pocket. You know, a lot like a Brady, where you know, just he knows when to push up. He sees the proper lanes, and while doing it, he can keep his eyes down the field. And he's got a phenomenal, phen a really quick release. I mean, a really quick release. For a guy that kind of drops the ball, he really can get it up and get it out in a hurry. And as far as an intermediate to short passing game, he's off the charts good. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, you know, again, we talked about the speed of the release, which is part of that, that, that throw, the intermediate and short passing game. But, I mean, accuracy in those type of moments. You know, the accuracy when – the feet are cockeyed, and he looks like he's playing defense in a, an NBA basketball game, but yet he can throw the ball 15 yards over the middle of the field and put it on the screws and throw a perfect spiral. I mean, those are the things I looked at. He's got a, a natural quarterback feel to him. I'm not blown away by his arm. His arm's good. I wish I could see a few more game-changing, big-type throws down right. the field. I think that can come, but that would maybe be one little question mark I have about him at this point. But, man, the Jets got to be pumped with what they got with Sam Darnold. So what would you make of this? I mean, he, yeah. he's super young. He just turned 22 Crazy. years old. And uh, what do you make of it? He had the foot injury. Yeah. He missed those three games. Yeah. And then came back after that and was so much better. Superb. It was almost like he needed that rest. Right. He threw for 761 yards in those three games, five touchdowns, no interceptions, 63%. His, you know, the second-to-last game, versus Green Bay, it was 341 yards, three touchdowns. I mean, it's like he came back a different guy. Different almost. guy. Yeah. I, and, you know, and, and, you know, it's a, it's a good question by you. We saw it with Josh Allen, who was my 23rd quarterback. He had the same kind of thing. Got injured, came back, and was like a different guy. Did they need that? You think they need just to take a step back in that rookie season? It does. It does the rookie year is a long year. That, that's the first thing I'll say in defending any of these rookies because, uh, you know, Ahmed, think about it. You know, you go from a bowl game to training for the combine to your yeah. pro day to, oh, my gosh, I just got drafted, and now you're right into the offseason. So you don't really have an offseason as a rookie. It's mentally exhausting. It's physically exhausting. And, hey, you're learning a lot. And I think sometimes when, when things like that happen, like with a Sam Darnold, he got a chance to kind of reassess himself, take a deep breath. Why am I making this so hard? He gets to watch a guy like McCown out there on the field, gets to see how he kind of manages the game, what he does. And it can make you reassess your own play mm -hmm. and make you more comfortable mentally the next time you go out there to kind of remind yourself, like, wait, this isn't that hard. I just saw Josh McCown, who's not as talented as me, yeah. do some good things. I can do that, and I think I can do him better. And you're right, man. He was just through the, through the roof good at yeah. the end of the year with big-time throws, scrambling, uh, managing situations. It was fun to watch. It's got to give him so much confidence, yeah. too. He's got new weapons in Le'Veon Bell and Jamison Crowder. And his grandfather was yep. Dick Hammer, who was a Marlboro man in the 70s. Isn't that amazing? He, that's pretty good. I, I asked him about it once, what actually. What did he say about it? Well, yeah. I mean, the guy, the guy uh, he's the first Marlboro, Marlboro man. He was the first the one. The first one, right. And... Yeah, I mean, that's a – come on. I mean, this, is there really a better name in the history of mankind than Dick, Dick Hammer? Hammer? I mean, I feel like you have to live up to a certain expectation when you have that name. I yeah. Mean, I don't want to get too gross here, but, I mean, that's <laughs> just – I sound like – No, absolutely. You know, yeah. I mean, when that's your name, it's just you know, like, damn, you know. Yeah, you better – Bring the hammer. I uh, the three the three most likely um, <laughs> players to have to have smoked a cigarette on the sideline during an NFL game. Um, my top three. Number yeah. three, Brett Favre. I think that I could see that of happening. I hear you. Number two, Larry Zonka. I never saw Larry Zonka play, but I feel like he looks like he'd be like, "Give me the ball up the middle." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I watched American Gladiators too. Right. With him. 
I love that show. Yeah. That, that, honestly, that was, that was a my, good show. That was one of my favorite I shows. I liked it growing, growing up. up, too. I'm with you. Do I you used to watch the, it. Do you remember the theme? song oh i know uh gosh go ahead do it i can't <laughs> and they had all of the different uh, i didn't even remember the names of them like the ice and malibu yeah, that's right storm yeah. thunder i loved that show with mike adamley too yeah um and number one the most likely to have smoked a cigarette on the sidelines during an nfl game ryan fitzpatrick right i think i actually saw it you think you I think I did see it you. last year, yeah. Uh, so I just went through there. Um, oh, our producer Pete says that there's a photo of Len Dawson. Back in those days, yeah. During uh, Super Bowl One, Right. Halftime of Super Bowl One To recharge. You had to recharge. Uh, okay. That is uh, Sam Darnold. Can you imagine doing that? Doing a cigarette? Smoking cigs in the halftime of a game. Damn, that'd be that'd be hilarious. To what, be but what do we do now? My dad was a part of the era where it was just yeah. ending. Like early on in his career, he'll tell you there were some guys in the locker room on defense that smoked cigarettes at halftime. But then it, it just was at the end of that that era where people started to go, wait, let's work out and be healthy. Well, smoking was like seen as healthy. Yeah, like, I guess when it was it like giving them out, energy. Like, yeah, like, that's absolutely. what it was. Right. Like, what do we do now? That fifty years from now, it'd be like, what idiots were we? We put an electronic device up to our head for hours a day. Of course, we're gonna have brain problems. I'm talking about the phone. Oh That's yeah, what okay. Like, or what do we do I now? Drink energy drinks with <laughs> chemicals, and what a dumb idea that is. Let's not that, drink all those chemicals all the time. That was so like last week. Yeah, thank that. you. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.